distraction free mode, which is really cool, some layout improvements, and then I don't know, a whole load of quality of life improvements across the board. So this one's very stacked. <laughs> Hello. In this video, I'm joined by WordPress expert Rich Tabor to discuss his top five features coming to the block editor in WordPress 6.2. My name is Dave Smith, Gutenberg core team member and full-time WordPress contributor. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, Rich. Hey, how's it going, Dave? It's a pleasure being here today. Yeah. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking you probably don't need much of an introduction to most folks who work regularly in WordPress land. But for those who might not know you, could you give us a quick overview of who you are and what you do in WordPress? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a product manager at Automatic. Uh, so I help to push the WordPress project forward, uh, focusing on Gutenberg and the site editor uh, in particular right now. Um, prior to joining Automatic, I worked at GoDaddy and Extendify, and I also built uh, Coblox and ran uh, Theme Beans, uh, a theme shop of old. So um, I like WordCamps, I speak there uh, regularly, and uh, I like to write and blog all about WordPress. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. Well, it's a real pleasure to have you with me here today. So are you ready to dive into the top five features of WordPress 6.2? Yeah, man, let's do it. So WordPress 6.2 is just around the corner. And it's bizarre to me as it feels like only the other day that I was recording a video about WordPress 6.1. This will be the first major release of WordPress this year. And as usual, it will come with a load of new features for the block editor, as well as bug fixes and improvements to accessibility. In addition, this is supposed to herald the end of phase two of the Gutenberg project roadmap. And that's something that Rich and I are going to touch on at the end of this video. So be sure to watch to the very end to see what we both think about this controversy. We're recording this video on Thursday, the 9th of March, which is only weeks away from the launch of WordPress 6.2, which will be scheduled for the 28th of March, 2023. So Rich, at this point, do you think we have a clear idea about which block editor features are going to be included? And if you do, how excited are you about them? Yeah, I mean, we, we do have quite a few big improvements on the way, and uh, I'm super keen to talk about them. And um, I would say there are five big things that uh, are top of mind to me uh, right now. Yeah, sounds good. I can't I can't wait to get into those. But before we do, uh, would you be able to give us a quick overview of all of the features that are coming to WordPress 6.2? I mean, obviously, there's loads, <laughs> but we can take over the we can take the high level ones, right? Yeah, I would, I would start with um, the idea of browse mode. It's a, a new way to interact with the site editor uh, where you can click on your pages that are within your navigation and instantly see them within the site editor and then actually proceed to edit them instead of having this uh, separation between content and template. Uh, and then we have uh, menu management. Uh, there's this new off canvas navigation, uh, which you can, lets you really manipulate the navigation in a way that uh, was previously a bit more difficult to do. So uh, folks will really uh, enjoy an easier navigation experience. Um, there's quite a few interface changes coming. Uh, we've removed uh, the beta label from the site editor. There's some new color applied to template parts and reusable blocks, which help identify them within the list view. Uh, we have block settings and style settings now separated. It's in different tabs on the block inspector. And then the new Inserter improvements allow for inserting images from your media library directly and also from Openverse, which is a, a library of 600 million or so assets um, that are available to add to your site. Um, there's also patterns that are coming. There's new headers and footer patterns and also the ability to uh, specify patterns for specific template types. Then we've got some style improvements, including the idea of style book, which is a, a style guide for your theme, copy and pasting styles, pushing styles globally from one component to the others, um, new inline previews for global styles. Like the styles improvements are are pretty wide. Um, <laughs> and then, I mean, just the lists off the top of my head, we've got distraction free mode, which is really cool, some layout improvements, and then I don't know, a whole load of quality of life improvements across the board. So this one's very stacked. <laughs> 
Wow, yeah, uh, that's some list of features. I felt like I said that about WordPress 6.1, but this one uh, is even more stacked out. And yeah, it's really exciting. There's some really good stuff in there. My regular viewers will know that I actually always put out an overview video about WordPress, big WordPress releases. And these videos are five minutes long. Uh, they cover all the key features. And my video for WordPress 6.2 will be dropping sometime in the next week or so. So keep an eye out for that one. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. So Rich, thanks for the rundown of all the features. There's a lot to cover there, so thank you. And um, as we were saying before, you've kindly picked out your top five features for WordPress creators. I'm really excited about what you've chosen for us. Um, so let's take a look at those in some more detail. Does that sound good? Yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so first up on Rich's list of top five picks for the editor in WordPress 6.2, we're going to take a look at changes to exploring and editing in the site editor. So Rich, I feel there's probably quite a lot that fits under this umbrella. So I'd love it if you could talk a little about what you mean here and maybe give us a demo of how all this fits together. Yeah, sure thing. Let me uh, share my screen here. All right. Well, the first big thing I want to talk about is the idea of browse mode and how that ties into navigation. There's um, some some quite a few improvements here. Uh, this is the site editor experience uh, that you can get to. That's now out of beta. When you click on navigation over here, uh, we have these two different pages within my navigation loaded. And if I click on one of these, I will browse to that page here within the editor experience here. Now I can click on it, I can make changes to this, I can do anything as if I was in the block editor as well. And then I can also manipulate the page template. So like these are the components outside of the post content. Now when I would change the header, for example, or if I change the footer, or if I changed any of the, su the supporting elements around the post content, like making this to the center, this would also be applied to any of my other templates. Uh, whereas just the post content is editing just the page itself, this about page. This idea is uh, really bringing the concept of editing content into the site editor in a way that um, is simpler than having to navigate previously back to the all pages view and kind of digging into WordPress. Uh, whereas now we can just do it right here from this uh, clean interface at the top. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that. Going, going back to all pages is never... A good experience so having that all integrated in one experience is, is is much nicer for creators definitely yeah exactly and and it brings like the the most top level pages like the important stuff that you have right on the top of your site right here now if you had sub menus you would see those as well um, or even social menu social links uh, in your navigation you would see those too so it really does keep the important pieces of your site front and center um, and, and keeps you within one experience which i think is is nice we can see some of the other improvements to navigation that are very similar. We have this new um, off canvas experience over here. So while previously you could go in here and move items around using the toolbar, it wasn't quite as intuitive. It's a little bit more challenging to use than this experience here. Over here, you click on a link, you edit any of the uh, items here. You can even style this one particular link or go up to the navigation and, and style itself right here. And it kind of contains the experience within this sidebar instead of having to try to finagle with this uh, toolbar here. I think it's a really great experience. And a lot of these componentry items are also used over here. So these experiences are going to get closer and closer together to wherever you navigation or wherever you edit your navigation, it'll feel um, similar and feel nice. Um, so yeah, I'm really absolutely. excited about those. Yeah, I, like, I mean, obviously, I, I worked on that feature quite a bit. Um, the sidebar experience in the navigation block itself is particularly useful if you have a heavily nested menu as well, because if you ever try to edit sub menus within the canvas when you've got um, when you've got it when you navigation block, it's it's a very difficult experience to to get right and to engineer. And this sidebar view does allow you to manage sub menus in a, in a much cleaner way. So, yeah, I'm hopeful that people will. Um, like that and uh, we'll be able to build on it on future releases as well yeah i agree i, I think it's uh, going to continue moving in the right direction yeah thanks for that demo it's uh that's really clear it's really good um now as i said like i've been working on some of these features and i think i'm pretty sort of in the weeds of this because i work on the plugin all of the time but um i like like taking a step back and seeing how everything comes together in the round um i i really see how it's very impactful for people when they just first install 6.2 I think um, for me, 
I think that potentially the browse mode might be the most controversial thing we've we've got here. It might come as a bit of a surprise for people suddenly used to they used to land straight in the site editor. Now they've got this kind of frame around everything. Certainly it took me a while to adjust to. Um, but when I gave it a chance, uh, over time the experience really started to grow on me. And actually you, I started to recognize the the value of like productivity about just being able to go quickly to my navigation or go to my templates or pages or whatever. And um, so I think it's I think it's really going to pay pay dividends in the longer term. People just need to give it a chance to bed in. Um, and also it does pave the way for moving other controls into this sort of global space. Um, I'm thinking specifically global styles or the styles panel. Um, that's not in this release, but maybe in 6.3, we might see global styles here as well. And then there'll be just this one unified place for changing things globally on your site. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, hundred percent. I think having global styles and then potentially even in the future, other plugins being able to, oh, yeah. to add panels and, and load their own frame over here. I think the, 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 this is really just the foundation for the future of editing your entire site uh, in WordPress and including all the settings and, and panels that plugins might add. Okay. Are we ready to move on to your next top pick? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So next up we have designing with the style book. So previously when you were making stylistic changes using the styles panel, the global styles panel, it could be difficult to perceive how those changes would affect your site unless the blocks you were modifying were actually on the current template you were seeing. So as I understand it, the style book is kind of like a one-stop shop where you can see all your blocks in one place and you can adjust the settings of, of your styles and you can see how that changes things in real time. Have I got that right, Rich? Yeah, that's it exactly. Um, and I can actually share a quick demo here of all the, the new bits around style book. All right, so to dive into style book, you'll go into the editing experience just by clicking on the frame here. And then we have the styles icon at the top. Now this panel looks the same. I mean, there's no big changes here within uh, 6.2 other than being able to see a zoomed out view of your site whenever you click on style variations here. Uh, but the, the big thing is this uh, new style book icon here. Now the style book is loading all of the blocks that are registered to this particular site when they're sorted by block category up here. So these are all the text. We've got media, uh, design, widgets, and then in any of the theme specific blocks. So now these blocks are, are very interesting because I can click on this here and it pulls up the relative style panel on the right. Uh, now this is all part of style book and it kind of connects the two ideas. So when it makes changes here, like applying, uh, let's see, let's change the background color of this button. Maybe we'll change some typography settings here, make it small. I like this look here. We'll do like a bold italic look. We can even make changes to the the padding dimensions and we can do something manual like mm. this yeah. or set separate uh, vertical and horizontal paddings just to kind of create a interesting button style now these are getting applied to all these buttons here so it's like the default base style for my buttons and then you can go in and even modify the outline variation of this button block so we'll say let's add a shadow there's some interesting shadows we could do this here uh, we could do that shadow there and then maybe make the border radius match this sharp edge here is in the shadow is also a new control added within 6.2 it's it's still in its uh, beginning stages. We, we want to eventually add a way to manipulate the shadows further, but themes can add their own default shadows. Uh, and right now they're only applied to button blocks, but eventually I'm, I'm thinking that those will probably extend quite a bit into other areas. But now I've got this button styled across the entire site um, through the styles panel here. And you can do the same thing anywhere else. If I close this here, I see that the styles that I've used on the text and also the layout have been applied here. I've applied a, an actual color to this button block itself within the context of this area. So its colors are still being mapped to this block, but all the other values are now pushed to this block, which is kind of nice. 
Yeah, that's really powerful. So you don't have to actually have to have all those things like quote blocks or columns blocks in in your template at all. You can just go to here, you can style them how they want. And then you can start building out your site and you know that all the all the all the blocks are going to look how you expect. It would really ties everything nicely together. Exactly. What it's like um like a style guide for theming, essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. one big style guide. It's really, really, really powerful. I mean, I used yeah. to work on um in agency land and we used to build we used to build PHP themes, but like we used to sort of generate basically this, but in <laughs> in PHP so that we could make sure we didn't miss out any um any styles and things like that. But this is just having this in the editor. I I mean, if I was designing themes, this would be a game changer. Yeah, exactly. And then again, if you add any third party blocks, uh, if they have examples, then they would also show up here as well. Really? Wow. Yeah. And if they're and if they're using the the block supports, like using these exact uh, you know mechanisms that uh, Chorus provided for blocks to style with then uh, you'll be able to control all of those styles with third-party blocks too. It's pretty powerful. Um, but Rich, uh, I know this isn't the only change to styling blocks that you're excited about for the WordPress 6.2 release. So are you ready to take a look at your next top pick for WordPress 6.2? Certainly. Um, let's do it. So my next pick would, would certainly be copy and pasting styles. You know, I mentioned earlier when we were going over all the features that there was like I don't know, 12 style related improvements across the board in 6.2, maybe even more. Uh, but copy and paste is, is a really interesting one. I'll show you here. So if we go into any particular block um, and we make changes to it, I'm going to do the same kind of bold italic look here. Do uppercase. Maybe we'll tighten it up a little bit more and make it a tiny bit smaller. You can take this now and hit copy styles right here from this uh, ellipsis menu. Then come down here to this section here and then paste that style to this block here. And then mm -hmm. I've I've been able to emulate that with you know just a couple of clicks whereas it would have taken me an entire time to style all of this again. And this is great where like in a style book I can globally affect how things look if I wanted all my headings to look like this. But if I just wanted a couple or just wanted on my hero and my, my big call to action on the footer to look this way, then I can selectively apply the styles anywhere. And this works again across any blocks that supports any of these styling um, attributes that are provided by Core. So it's, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. I've got to say, I, I really like this feature. Um, like so much in this release, I think it's a really great quality of life improvement. And I think when we start to see those sort of quality of life improvements coming out regularly in releases, it's sort of testament to the, the maturity of the software. Potentially, it's starting to really come into its own. Um, I think, I mean, basically, it had to happen, really, because with most software these days, you just expect that if you're going to be able to customize elements to the level that you now can with the Gutenberg design tools. I mean, it's, it, it's basically a must have that you can copy those elsewhere. And as you've just demonstrated, just being able to copy that thing and, and uh, those styles on the heading and paste them onto another styles and a heading. It, I mean, if you were doing that multiple times over the course of a, a theme build or uh, someone who's owning a site, it's going to, it's going to really start to compound on your, on your productivity. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, if you think about without copy and paste, I'd have to either try to remember everything I did, come all the way down here and then apply them here, or I'm, most likely you're going back and forth. And that's just on this one particular page. If it happens to be across different pages, that you know the issue compounds itself quite a bit. I think there'll be some further improvements around the UI here. Um, perhaps that'll be like a flyout where we can copy and paste block and styles uh, and blocks itself. So there's some improvements that we can do there. But overall, I'm very pleased with this. Absolutely, I think it's um, a really good feature, and I think it also combines really well with another feature of six point two which is um, the ability to sort of push local styles to become global. So um, it, well, let's just stick with this heading. So if you were if you were editing this heading here and you decided that those styles were the ones you wanted to apply to all your H2 headings or all your heading blocks, then I believe that under advanced, you can now push that to become a global style. I mean, I've certainly explored that for buttons. Um, does it work for all blocks? Yeah, uh, let's see. I'll try it here. I'll put a little bit different taste on this. Go to advanced and then if i hit apply globally and now that i've applied them globally it is all 
synced up there. So now these styles are here. Yeah, it's just like earlier when I showed with the buttons. If you have local styles applied to the particular item, then then your local choices will uh, will win over the uh, specificity. Um, but if it's a, a standard heading that you've made changes to, um, and then you've pushed it with no actual uh, adaptations here, then they will get received whenever you apply them globally, just like um, every, the buttoned ones earlier. Brilliant. So shall we move away from styling now and take a look at the next feature that you've got lined up for us? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so for this next feature, we have a bit of a double whammy for content creators. Not only do we have media now available in the global inserter, but we also have access to the full catalog of royalty-free Openverse images right from the editor. Rich, uh, are you ready to give us a quick demo of how this looks and feels? Oh yeah, this one, this one's a cool one. All right, so. To start, the inserter has gotten a few improvements. Uh, blocks looks the same. Patterns now has them listed out into categories. And then we have this media tab up here. When you click media, you'll see that we have uh, images, videos, audio, and now Openverse. Um, I'll start with images just to, to show what we have here. You can search your media library. I have a bunch of bird images from doing these demos. <laughs> but I really like this like green image here. Um, but let's... Uh, Post this one here. So you can see I have my image. I have a, the caption applied from uh, the image already. I can turn that off with this new control right here. And then you can take this and put it wherever you want, uh, do your resizing, move it around. Uh, but the idea is that when I inserted an image from the library here, it added the image block for me and applied the image um, and its caption. So it does all that for you instead of uh, previously where you had to actually add an image block and then decide what you wanted to do uh, open the media library and pick from the grid and then um, or upload from there so it kind of cuts out that whole step and, and makes it feel uh, more like one unit um, and one experience for added media now the the big thing here is when we look at openverse let me take that out and we're going to add something from openverse so now we can search through, I believe, over 600 million uh, open source images. Uh, we can go through here. Let's type birds again. And we'll pick a different one here. We'll pick uh, like this black and white one here. And now as soon as I clicked it, it's added to my site. Now these are pulled from uh, Openverse and not from my local media library, even though it, it, it kind of feels the same. And this is actually uploaded uh, within my WordPress install. So it's not linked from anywhere else. So it's and, not hot uh, anymore, it's ex now directly exactly. Right, nice. Exactly. And again, I can remove my caption. And this is an image block that I can do whatever with. I can put it in here. I can uh, I can then manipulate it, uh, set a duotone effect to just this image. Oh, it's already black and white. Maybe we'll do something interesting with all of these. I mean, you can kind of manipulate it further, mm -hmm. uh, just as if it was any other image on your site. Um, it's obviously a, a very uh, advantageous move to have all these images uh, accessible right here from uh, your block inserter now. But um, one thing I was just thinking when I was seeing this demo is that some people might not actually know what Openverse is. Uh, should we give a little like, idea of that for people? Where's it come from? What is this Openverse thing that's suddenly in Gutenberg Core? Yeah, so it's a, um, a catalog of openly licensed stock images and audio. Um, I think it what's it, openverse.org. Yeah, I'll pull it up here. Yeah, there we go. And you can uh, search for all the images here. We'll search for birds again. And we'll see mm -hmm. uh, some of the birds saying bird images. I also have all the audio here if you just yeah, want the imagery. Audio. You can filter it by license, image type, extensions. It's, it's a it's a massive library of, of imagery that that reference some references images from all over the web um, that are uh, available to use uh, openly so i think it's it's really powerful and you can see even some of the gutenberg design language moving into yeah. this uh, interface it's kind of neat how they're getting closer and closer together yeah exactly i, I think for me the, the good thing about this is that i was obviously aware of things like creative commons before it came open first and i knew where to get sort of royalty free images if I if I wasn't taking my own because I'm not really a photographer so if I needed to find an image that's how I'd do it but then you'd have to remember to get the right license you'd have to go up, get the right size of images you know it'd break your flow while you're 
kind of creating content but now you can just do it all within the editor and just say i want to i want to find an open image and it's all tied in for you really nicely there's no going off to other sites there's no downloading it's just it's just a really nice and streamlined experience and i for one are happy that i'll no longer have to break my writing flow to find royalty free images to use in my post so that's a that's a good thing and actually on that topic, let's take a look at your final top five feature, which is all about improving the writing experience within the editor. Yeah, so it's a distraction-free mode. It's a new way to interact with your content. Uh, and we have a couple of different view modes up here, one where you can turn off the toolbar spotlight mode, which it kind of only highlights the active block that you're that you're using. And then distraction free mode. So distraction free mode will remove all the noise, and, and, and all the toolbars are hidden. Uh, even the top toolbar here, you have to hover to to see that. Uh, but you can still write. You can still manipulate your content. Write more here. Um, the text selection is nice. You can you can f feel like you're not even using blocks anymore. It's more of like a a standard text editor experience uh, for even kind of selecting like what's it called like partial selection of content here you can even uh, change your images still and manipulate them as well uh, even button text any of the content pieces it's almost like content uh, only editing uh, but for pages here and then even for posts so if i go back to wordpress and hit add new post now that i turned on distraction free it's a, it's a site global here um, i can start writing so like write more and start writing here and then it really just kind of filters out everything and it just feels nice um it's almost i don't know it's almost like like day one in a sense in the way that it's um just a just you and your words and your ideas yeah it's like a proper it's like a proper zen mode that you you get on like text editors and things like that where you just focus purely on that content and ignore the sort of noise of toolbars and ui that appears when you're Sort of using the traditional block editor i also really like yeah. that for, for me like i'm i'm obviously a bit of a power user in inverted commas but i like the the shortcut that's like command shift or co control shift and back tick or backs backslash oh, backslash yeah. and you can just you can just quickly toggle on and off so i, I often yeah. find myself like oh i'm just editing this thing and like oh this, this toolbars are really annoying and off it goes then i can just really really like focus down i'm not i was um yeah, I was kind of hoping it was going to help me to write more blog posts. It hasn't turned out that way yet. But um, I definitely <laughs> see if you were someone who, someone like yourself who is diligent about writing long-form content, I can see that would uh, definitely be uh, something that you'd find very useful. Yeah, and and, it, and even like I'm showing here, like the all the markdown shortcuts still work nicely. Mm. So you can do a heading three, mm. just kind of write it in there. Four. I don't know. It's just like, it just, it just feels really nice. Command K for links. Um, it all... Is really smooth and, and concise. I like it. Right. Thanks for that demo, Rich. Now, I hear that WordPress 6.2, as we mentioned earlier, will conclude phase two of the Gutenberg project. So I thought whilst you're here with me, it might be useful for the viewers if we can recap some of the progress that's been made since 6.1 and discuss a little bit about what ending phase two means. Is that OK? Yeah, you know, overall, you know, six since uh, the last WordPress release, there's been a ton of improvements uh, and good bug fixes, um, enhancements all around, uh, particularly on the usability and the accessibility side of things. Uh, but and and I would say that this release is a solid step towards expanding functionality, but also offering new design tools and providing uh, a bunch of new ways to curate the site editing experience. Uh, but overall, the way I like to think of uh, this release in particular, and like this idea of phase two and phase three, is that this more so starts the phase three exploration phase at the end of this release, uh, not necessarily ending phase two. Like, sure, there's a there's a, a line in the sand where okay, now we're going to start shifting our focus, but we're not shifting all the responsibilities that are still out there um, of all the the experiences that we still want to improve, the design tools we still want to add eventually. Um, so I think there's a still a lot of work to go on all fronts. And if you think about phase one, even there's still a lot of work that is still going into improving the the block editor experience um, holistically. So it's kind of this uh, pursued nature of excellence. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I should also mention that when we're talking about phases in the Gutenberg project, there's there was four phases outlined by the WordPress Foundation, WordPress leadership, which is basically phase one, easier editing. Phase two was customization. Phase three is due to be on collaboration. And phase four is on multilingual. And um, uh, basically every major work at Matt Mullenweg gets asked something along the lines of, why are we leaving this phase behind and moving on to the next one when it's not done? And I think Rich has hit the nail on the head. Like it's not, we're not um, leaving anything behind. We're not gonna, you know, it's not like all the contributors like yourself and me are gonna suddenly down tools on on phase yeah. two and go, right, yeah, the editor's done. Let's move on to collaboration. I think like you said, it's just maybe a shifting of focus. Um, it'll be a gradual process perhaps, but um, I don't think anyone's gonna say, you know, I don't know, like the navigation block is done. I mean, it's, you know, I can say <laughs> that I work on it all the time. So uh, yes. you know it needs more it needs more work to be to be considered uh, a usable experience. So yeah, I like to think of this phase three as um, a, a mark on the sand, but um, there will still be work going on to improve things. Yeah, and, and overall, you know, there's a um, a strong foundation in place, uh, but we need more intuitive ways to interact with all these features and and uh, encourage folks to adopt them. You know, there's. There's, it's due time for polish and, um, you know, for kicking off phase three. So, you know, focusing on these workflows and collaboration, I think um, will be very interesting and help drive some of these other uh, phase two efforts even further. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see them first, of course, in the Gutenberg plugin, which is um, sort of living on the bleeding edge of the features that come out. And that's released every two weeks. So if you if you want to see these features before they land in a major WordPress release, you can install that plugin at your own risk. I probably wouldn't do it on a production site unless you know what you were doing. But, you know, on a local site, you could spin that up and see what's coming down the line and test these features out. And then you can see what might land in WordPress 6.3, which, I mean, by the basis of what's landed in WordPress 6.2, I'm certainly really excited about what can be coming. But of course, that's going to be a topic for another video, um, which maybe we can get you back to discuss that sometime in the future. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, Rich, it's been fantastic to have you here with me today to learn all about just some of the features that are coming to the block editor in WordPress 6.2. Now, as a reminder that if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. And of course, if you'd like a full rundown of what's on the way in WordPress 6.2, be sure to subscribe and you can watch my upcoming five minute overview video of all the key features. So, Rich, can you remind folks where they can find you, follow you, get the list of latest information about what you're doing and what you're working on? Yeah, I share everything I know on my blog, richtabor.com. And uh, I'm on Twitter. I, I tweet uh, pretty often uh, at Richard underscore Tabor. Everyone should check those links out. I mean, uh, Rich's blog in particular is um, a treasure trove of things on Gutenberg and the blog editor, mm -hmm. and everyone who's serious about it should definitely check it out. Right. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you once again to Rich for joining us, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. See you later.